We've known each other for a few years, and I'm the architectural historian, and Miguel is the curator and proper historian. And so he has the skills to be able to research the archives and other sources of that kind of information, while I'm the architectural and medical historian looking at the medical history. And therefore we make a great partnership. And my whole life, my whole career is about partnerships. I think partnerships produce good results. And they produce a synergistic result because neither of us could have written this paper, but between the two of us, we think we've got a good paper, which is important. How did it all start? About maybe 20 years ago, driving home from Bathsheba, I came down the hill from the top of Horse Hill and I looked across the cut cane fields at the Blackman's Great House site, which is now the Grantley Adams Memorial School site. The canes were cut, there was no housing development, and I could see a building which immediately said to me, that's the slave hospital. I've been looking for slave hospitals all over Barbados for 30, 20, 30 years, and there is one. And I drove into the yard of the school. It was a Sunday afternoon. There was a watchman on duty, and he said, feel free, go and have a look. And I saw this amazing building, which absolutely perfectly fit the description of the medical writers who in the era of uh, the attempt, what we call the amelioration period to improve the conditions of the enslaved have described what a slave hospital should be like. And this fit the description perfectly because we have medical writers like Granger and St. Kitts, James Granger and uh, Philip Gibbs of Barbadian who described what a hospital should be like. And this fit the description perfectly. So what I did at that time was to go and get uh, the late Ronnie Hughes and my friend, Professor Wood Sir Woodville Marshall. And the three of us went up to the Blackman site a few days later and looked at it. And they agreed with me that this fit the purpose of a hospital and wasn't fit for any other purpose. You know, it was designed perfectly as a long, narrow building with a ward on each side of a central administrative structure. The building each has, the building has two wings, which are each 38 feet long, which could accommodate six or seven beds, 16 feet wide, room for beds and a corridor down the middle to look after these, the patients. And huge windows for ventilation because everybody emphasized the importance of ventilation. And so this is a building that is absolutely fit for purpose. And we'll come back to the purpose for which we should use it today. So when Miguel and I talked about it, we said, well, hey, we need to write the definitive article about this building and bring it to the attention through the Museum Journal, which is the, the authentic historical documentation of Barbadian history, and bring it to the attention of the general public. Well, I'd just like to, first of all, thank the Barbados Museum and Historical Society for doing taking this wonderful initiative. I think that this is going to cause the already excellent journal of the Barbados Museum to grow from strength to strength. Um, I think that whoever came up with this idea deserves a medal or promotion. <laughs> <laughs> um, with regards to what uh, Sir Henry said, I echo it completely. Um, we came together to collaborate on this project. We've collaborated on previous projects. And Sir Henry had mentioned this building to me a few years ago. And I actually also went and took an independent look at it. And I thought that it was a very interesting hospital, a uh, very interesting building. And um, then in later conversations with Sir Henry and looking at what he had written, um, I am convinced um, that it is indeed um, a purpose-built building. And I am fairly positive that it is indeed an infirmary or a sick house or a hospital um, for, for what would have been then the, the enslaved in Barbados um, at that plantation at Blackman's. Um, I think that uh, we do need to do more research. Um, we have not been able to find ledgers, for instance, on Blackman's um, plantation, per se. 
Um, and I think that we would find significantly more information to describe the lives of the enslaved people um, who lived there. Um, their day-to-day -day activities, as, as we all know within the world of social history in the Caribbean, the slave community, the slave population was extremely complex, um, ranging gender, age, nationality, even the way complexion was defined, um, the naming practices of the enslaved. For instance, if you look at the Newton Journal, the Newton Ledgers that are housed at the Barbados Museum, uh, in the back of those ledgers, you start to see the names of the enslaved appearing from the 18 teens. You see um, the, their descriptions based on their age, their gender, even their nationality, um, complexion, skill sets as well. Um, and you also see them, you also see the enslaved adding surnames, which is fascinating. And I believe that if we do find the Blackman journals, you are going to see something similar taking place at Blackman Plantation. And hopefully this video is going to be seen by many people. And if they do happen to find those ledgers or they have those ledgers in their possession, please contact uh, either Sir Henry Fraser or myself um, or the Barbados Museum. And I think that we'd be very, very happy and interested in taking a look at those journals so we can build on this research. I'm sure we both have final words, but I have some very important final words, because what has happened at Blackman's is the unfortunate abandonment of this important building. Now, the museum has been able to organize a UNESCO slave route. And the UNESCO slave route basically currently, or up to now, has involved mostly signage. The signage at the Newton burial ground, the signage in Sweet Bottom, and then the modern sculpture at the Rock Hall Village. Now, this slave museum is in fact the most important artifact of slavery that we have in Barbados today. You see, a lot of people think that all slave owners were horrible, vicious, devilish, miserable, angry, cruel people. But like everyone, like all of us, like, like politicians today, there are good politicians, there are bad politicians. So there were good slave owners and there were more humane slave owners. And I, I'm going to read a passage from the journal for this because I think it's so important. Uh, Philip Gibbs, the British planter, wrote, the master who refused these comforts to his slave denies himself the satisfaction he would feel as a good Christian from the reflection that he had fulfilled his duty and as a worldly man from the consideration that he has promoted his interest. So you see, Gibbs recognized and was quite frank, there was a humane side to the slave hospital and there was a practical side because with the abolition of sl the slave trade and slavery coming, people recognized, hey, you know, we must treat our slaves better. And Barbados was the first Caribbean country, the first British West Indian country, where the procreation of slaves was successful so that the slave numbers actually increased from procreation. But I want to point out that even though medical care at the time could not do much for the enslaved, just having a hospital where the slave would go, the non-medical approaches in a hospital, once the nurses were sober, would be beneficial through the withdrawal of alcohol, medical and nursing care, hydration of those who were not getting enough clean water to drink and bed rest. All of that would allow nature to do its part. And so what we want, what I and Miguel and others who other historians have seen, we would like to see this hospital restored so that we can tell the story of the enslaved and the aspect of the enslaved period after the 1780s, the amelioration period. And the school itself would love to see it because the school is very strong in art and the art teachers would love to see it restored either as a studio or workshop or gallery so that you can imagine that the visitors would come up to see the slave hospital. There could be artifacts and posters about the enslaved period in one one ward, as it were, of the hospital, and the other ward could be the students' workshop and art gallery. And this would be absolutely wonderful. So I have put it to the chairman of the board of the Bradley Adams School, Mr. Griffith, George Griffith, that this could be 
practically restored with the effort perhaps of old alumni who are in the construction and building trade, the advice of the National Trust and other restoration architects like Gillespie and Steele and so on. And it could be, you know, people give building materials. People often don't give money, but the importers of building materials and so on would provide lumber and other construction requirements, paint, you know, Harris Paints is very generous in that way. So I am hoping that with this new administration, we will have the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Culture coming together with the museum and the school to produce one of the most wonderful elements to tell us more about the enslaved period. I'd like to um, add to that and say that um, as an artifact, I think that the enslaved hospital at uh, Blackman's will help to complement the coming or the planned museum of slavery in the Atlantic world that is scheduled for Newton enslaved burial ground, which is perhaps the most prominent artifact or monument of slavery in Barbados. Um, I also, my, my wish for buildings like the, um, like the structure at um, the Grantley Adams Secondary School is that Barbadians take ownership of it. Um, from the perspective they recognize that it is there, it is part of their heritage, their ancestors built it, um, their ancestors, some of their ancestors would have received medical attention there, and that it is interpreted. Um, the, I think the most important thing is the interpretation of these sites um, to fully acknowledge that they were part of the ethos of enslavement in Barbados, right, um, and that they're adaptively reused, essentially for the benefit of Barbadians, all Barbadians. And I, and echo, want... I also echo Sir Henry's sentiments. I think it ought to be, um, I do think it should be restored um, uh, as other aspects of uh, built heritage across the country. I'd make one final point. It would be fantastic for the entire esteem and success of the Grant Adams School. As you know, the Grant the Adams School has had a difficult time and many challenges, but the slave hospital is eminently accessible along the northern border of the school. And if this were done, think of the pride of the Grant the Adams School in both having a historic site on their site, as well as having the promotion of the art and culture within the school. I think it would be a great, a great benefit to the school. Thank you.